managed by me, my father, and my brother. So we're going to get launched right in, and I'm going to try and kick us off with a little bit of context. Um, I'm going to possibly make some people a little uncomfortable, um, but it's only because I know that's how I would feel. Um, so my presentation is two years of BPUN, what have we learned? Um, you might think at the end of today, well, they clearly didn't learn that much. Uh, it was still shambolic and chaotic, but we kind of like it that way, actually. So first of all, welcome to London. Welcome to my hometown, Bigger Plates hometown, um, and a really great city. How many of you are from outside of the UK, just as a show of hands? Excellent. Okay, so the international contingent, welcome to London. Thank you so much for traveling uh, this far. Um, for those of you who've also traveled quite far, but from technically from the UK, although the Scottish tried to um, get yourselves out of it, Diana, Jamie, uh, thank you for traveling down so far. Are we ready? Yes. Are we energetic? Are we feeling up for it? I would like you all to know that our events, for those of you who haven't been before, are relaxed. They are informal. We are not trying to impress you particularly with our seriousness. Okay? So please feel relaxed. Please feel free to connect with the different people in the room. And hopefully you'll take a lot more away than if we try to convince you of our own brilliance. Who's on Twitter in the room? Let's see lots of tweets today. Ideally with some photos and even more ideally with the be pun tag. I think you know your event is doing well when people start creating new tags for the event. I've seen be pun 2015 on the site. I've seen be pup, I think, Miko. I think you threw be pup out last night. Um, so, you know, if I'm going to be dead serious, it's, you know, stick on brand, guys, okay? Okay. <laughs> Fears and phobias, what an odd place to start. But this is kind of what I felt like I wanted to start with. Who would be brave enough in the room to tell me a fear they have, a phobia? Moths. Moths. Excellent one. Diana. The car wash. The car wash. Even better. Anything stranger than the car wash? You're all going, where is he going with this? <laughs> phobias. Speakers who waffle. One of my great phobias. Networking. Ugh. Networking. You will hopefully, as long as I stay true, you will never see networking drinks, networking refreshments, networking breaks at a bigger plate event. That is because I find them so appalling, so hard. I am that guy who finds a really important email to do on my phone. Sorry, I couldn't possibly try and engage with you. I'm that person who walks into the room and goes, oh, it looks like everyone knows each other. I'll, um, again, really important email. So this is my great fear, and I suspect, actually, does anybody here want to admit that they also hate networking? One, two, three, five, seven, twelve. Most people find it a little bit nerve-making, a little bit uncomfortable. So what we're going to try and do is make it a little bit less uncomfortable and a little bit more bigger plated. So we're going to get started by thinking visual. You'll see down over in this corner a load of images scattered over the floor. And we're a little bit behind time, so I'm going to really challenge you to try and stick to time. What I'm going to ask you all to do, choose an image from the floor. So get up with your seats. Go and choose an image. Choose an image that speaks to you based on the statement, for me, mind mapping is. Now, would anybody want to tell me that they're a complete novice, they don't know anything about bigger play, anything about mind mapping? One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Even better. So you might choose an image that says, I have no clue what you are talking about. I have no clue what this event is about, but I've come in because I'm an adventurer. So choose an image for that. If you're a real expert, and I know there are some in the room, choose an image that talks about, for me, mind mapping is. Then just come back to where you're sat and share with your table. For the guys who've gone right down the far end, maybe bring yourselves a little bit in so you've got someone to share with. Um, just explain why you chose the image and use that as your introduction. That is the best solution I've come up with to avoiding networking. Okay? You will then at least know one person, two people. And most importantly, and this definitely works, we do this a lot, you will remember people's names and faces much better because you will be able to associate it with an image. I guarantee you. So, on your feet, grab an image, I'm going to give you about five, ten minutes at max. Okay, everybody. Are we ready? So somebody just pointed out to me another phobia. Their phobia is being made to tell people about themselves in public. 
definitely falls under the same category as my networking phobia. So don't worry, I'm not going to ask everyone or uh, anyone to tell us what they said. Unless anybody would like to volunteer, what image did they choose? Anybody feeling brave? Ton. From the Netherlands. Ton has chosen a really disgusting image. <laughs> okay, Ton. And why is that to do with mind mapping? Perfect. Thank you, Tom. That's very good. And thank you for sharing such a graphic image with us just after breakfast. <laughs> So I'm just going to um, move straight on because uh, uh, I hope that has... Did, did anybody get over their networking phobia a little bit by doing that instead of the normal thing? Did that work as an exercise? Okay, good. I'm very pleased. Uh, I do have to say, please don't steal our images because we lose about 10 every time we do this exercise. And it actually starts to add up after a while. But thank you all for participating energetically. It makes a huge difference. I hope it gets us off to a good start. I'm now going to have to race... But luckily, I'm not the, uh, the real person we're here to speak to, or hear from, rather, today. So I'm going to try and give you a very quick insight into two years of BPUN, hashtag BPUN, uh, what we've learned. The origins, for those of you who don't know, and, and what's really exciting for me today is there's a lot of new faces in the room, as well as some, some sort of uh, veterans, I suppose, of the mind mapping world. The origins of <coughs> Bigger Plane Unplugged was a slightly circular conversation. The veterans in the room will recognize when I say that there was a conversation about having a mind mapping conference for a very, very long time. And it went round and round in circles and never quite got off the ground. So in the end, we thought, OK, well, we can give it a crack um, and see what happens. And we adopted a mindset of we will run an experiment and we will see. And fortunately for us, lots of people engaged very positively. And our other original goal of connecting the community got off to a flying start in London, actually, two and a little bit years ago. We figured this could be a really great opportunity and driver of collaboration and innovation within the mind mapping arena, within the mind mapping community. The results. Five events in five cities, I should say in two years. It nearly killed us, but we did it. We did London, Paris, Utrecht, San Francisco, Berlin. I think that's the right order. We went where the mappers are, where the mappers were, where we'd like there to be more mappers, and we hopefully said we will bring our event, the format, the energy, to wherever there is energy to meet with it. We have had, I think, my maths is terrible, but I think all in all we've had about 300 plus mappers have gathered together, not all at once, but in the different events we've done, different shapes and sizes. Most importantly, we've made piles of cash from these events. They have been huge money spinners for the business, and we now live in gold houses and sleep on beds made of five-pound notes. Money was not the goal with these, and if it was the goal, then we failed spectacularly. San Francisco in particular is a really expensive place to do anything, let alone host an event, let me tell you. Anybody here ever hosted events, by the way? Okay, so you know how expensive events are, full stop. So money was not the goal. We were trying to learn some things. So we learned a few things. Most important insight, when I try and speak French, I sound Australian. Don't know why. There's a video of me on YouTube that is quite appalling. I was trying my best to engage with the French community in French, and I started raising the end of my sentences in my French. Whenever I finished a sentence, it would go up in the end in my French. It was very, very odd. So that was a really important piece of learning. Liam should not speak French. That's why we've lovely Camille, who now does the French speaking for us. Getting unplugged is vital. We are absolutely bombarded and connected in all of the time. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Bigger Play, anything. We are so online. And actually, the goal of these events originally was to take all of these people who you know their face from LinkedIn, you know their name from Twitter or Facebook. We wanted to say, OK, we could probably move things on a little bit faster and be bigger, more ambitious, if we actually connected up in person. So this has proven to be absolutely correct. Getting unplugged, getting offline is really, really important, and it does seem to make a real difference. There's actually been a couple of books written as a result of people who have connected up at Bigger Plate Unplugged events. That's quite cool. You turn online connections into offline connections. 
We as a business gather a huge amount of community feedback, as do the software companies when they come along because they engage with us. We get a lot of ideas and innovation, um, some of which is quite out there, um, some of which is probably a little bit beyond the remit of our little uh, MyMap library business, but we'll take it on board anyhow. Local perspectives are key. The reason I think Bigger Plate Unplugged has established itself now quite firmly in the mind of the mind mapping community is we have shown the willingness to go to regional communities and engage with them on their terms. Hence the reason why I ended up speaking terrible, terrible French. Needless to say, I didn't try Dutch or German when we tried those, those cities. Local perspectives give us a lot of insight, and they really do highlight there are regional differences. There's, there's just no two ways about it. Um, the French event, when we say, right, does anybody have any questions? The French don't ask questions. They just tell you about things. And there might be a question in there if you listen really, really hard. The Dutch, they have a lot of questions. A lot of questions. The Americans, they just want to get on. Let's get going. What can we do next? Very excitable. There are regional differences, and we have to be accommodating to them. We have to pay attention to them. A lot of the times they reflect market maturity is not the right phrase, but some mind mapping communities are more developed, more connected, more visible than others. Um, so again, we are trying to understand which are the ones that maybe are still in the fairly um, young stage of development. Do we need to bring something different for that? And which are more established? We hope, and it really is great when we have people visiting from those other communities and getting together in events, we hope it means there'll be some cross-pollination we can learn from what's happening and working in France, in the Netherlands, in the US. We need to be able to sort of learn from these different perspectives. And it doesn't happen all online, so we have to get offline. Our main sort of belief is mind mapping. So those of you who are new to mind mapping, if I tell you this is our core belief, mind mapping is the missing link. It's the tool in people's work that they wish they had. And most of the time when people discover it and adopt it, they think, how did I ever do this task before I had mind mapping? It's a really, really simple concept, but this is the tool that should be sat on everybody's computer in one form or another. That's our opinion. That's our core belief. We kind of tested it through these events and really it's been validated. How many of you would agree with the fact that there are tasks in your life now you can't quite fathom? How would you come at it if somebody took away your mind mapping software? Would your alternative approach be as good? Probably not. And it's really not about saying mind mapping is the greatest thing in the world. We all must mind map. Well, actually, that is what we're saying. But it's not the greatest thing in the world. But it is a really valuable tool and process that a lot of people are missing. And that's really our goal is to try and say, okay, we need to help people understand, A, that they are missing this tool, and B, most importantly, where it fits. So that's been validated, and really, again, validated in this room, it seems to be a fairly universal view. There are people at every conference who say, why aren't more people using this? It's really simple, it's really easy, and it really works. b -pun challenges. What have we learned from doing five events in two years? Before I talk about the challenges, I'm going to show you this incredibly um, sophisticated graph that we paid a huge amount of money to have drawn up by a graphic designer who's won all sorts of awards. Pretty amazing, huh? This designer is very highly rated in the local Shoreditch startup scene. Um, you'll notice that it starts to go back up down there. It's a bit bumpy, but you know, it's okay, we forgive him. This is a graph that I have drawn for the Bigger Plate team several times very badly. This is surprisingly actually the best version of it. I believe, and again I'm interested to test my assumption, this is trillions by the way, number of people in trillions, okay? So there are a high number of people with a very low knowledge and understanding of mind mapping, some of whom are in this room. As we go along, how much do you know about mind mapping? There's still quite a volume, and then in this section there's quite a quick drop off actually. Then we get down here, and you're talking about people who really understand the difference between a mind genius map and a mind jet map. They understand that this format doesn't work with this software. They understand that you can do Gantt charts, all these other things. The knowledge is much higher. We divide this into three, and I give us a score based on how well Bigger Plate, as a website and as a business, caters for each of these groups. Out of ten. Would anybody like to fathom or guess what I give us as a score here? Out of 10, how well do we look after 
the expert mind mappers? How well does Bigger Play accommodate them? People who understand the software, all these sort of things. Pretty well, thank you, Andrew. I'm glad you agree. I give us about a six or a seven here. So someone like Andrew who understands this map can't work with this software, this file can't work with that. It's, it's not too complicated, but you'd have to have discovered that before you know it. What about this category here? This is where people maybe know about mind mapping, but maybe don't know that there's software. Maybe don't know that this software doesn't work with that. How well do you think Bigger Plate caters for this group? A bit higher. I would disagree. I think we do not a great job of guiding people from here to here at the moment. What about up here? The people who are, who are the novices in the room? Okay, so how many of you have visited biggerplate.com, the website? How well did we cater for you? How well did we take you by the hand and say, "Welcome. Let us tell you about mind mapping." You let us know. Perfect. Uh, please do. Absolutely correct. I score us generally about a seven here, about a five here, and about a three here if I'm generous, more about a two. We don't do a great job at the moment of guiding people through the process, guiding people along that curve. I give you that context only because one of the challenges with BPUN is the scale and reach. And I think most of the time we have people who are in that final third coming to these events. We have people who are fairly familiar with mapping, fairly familiar with software, apps, this sort of world, fairly familiar with what bigger play is, what we do, how it works. But we're not necessarily getting all the right bits in the right place. Um, one of the issues with scale and reach is it's quite hard to justify going and doing an event of this size and scale for a, a community where we can only really see a handful of mappers. So we're not really giving much of an opportunity to engage those people, people who might be at the front end of that curve and who might be really up for learning more, moving along the curve, not necessarily engaging the whole curve, if you like. Balance. In the room today, at one point, you will have the entire Bigger Plate team. It is six people. Let me do a very quick introduction. My youngest brother, Barnaby, who takes care of our community in English. Camille, who welcomed you on the door. That's not Camille stood by the door, by the way. Uh, no offense, but she's a little bit more uh, you know, petite. And, you know. um, Camille takes care of our French community. She's very new, so please go and introduce yourself, especially if you're a French speaker. Uh, Graham sat down there, my father. He is the wise old man of the group. Nick, not related, <laughs> kind of, uh, who basically builds, builds the website, adopted, yes. So Bigger Plate is a very small business still. We have a brand that people, I think, often think there's a bigger company behind it, and there really isn't. So our challenge is balance in creating and maintaining momentum. <laughs> creating it is one thing, but maintaining it is another, especially in different regions. Who is it? A pa Did anyone come to our Paris event? Xavier, of course. Madeleine as well. Our Paris event was a great example of where we left a group very energized about what could be done, what could happen next, very excited. But our ability as a business to follow through and maintain momentum was very, very limited. We could not kind of keep people engaged in, with what we're doing. It's not to say everything dropped off because we weren't engaged, it's just we couldn't keep it going in the way we'd like. We're also very conscious of what we sort of have termed market weariness. Anybody who's in the European section of our sort of marketing email list will have been hearing about Bigger Plate Unplugged events for two and a half years. You might be sick to death of it by now. If you don't want to buy a ticket for Bigger Plate Unplugged, you probably don't want to hear about it every week for the next six months. So we're very conscious of not sort of um, taking advantage or abusing people's energy and enthusiasm for what we do. So we've got to try and get balance between momentum and sort of weariness. And what we've sort of come up with is phase two. How am I doing for my time? Oh, all over it. So our speakers today have to keep an eye on, on the man with the paper. So phase two, the purpose really is to engage more of the curve. So instead of creating events that are really catering probably only for the latter half and maybe don't cater for the novices so much, although I hope we'll do a better job of it today, we're going to try and create things that engage more of that curve. We're going to try and achieve greater breadth and balance in how we're engaging communities in the offline sense. The outcomes, hopefully, will be momentum that is both regular and regional. 
So whether that's uh, regional momentum up in Scotland, where Diana and Angus are based and Jamie is based, whether that's regional engagement, even just the northern English cities, where we just don't have much momentum, we haven't engaged people, or it's going to Belgium, to Paris, any of these places, more regular, more regional. We hope this will all help with that idea of mapping is the missing link. We need to therefore drive greater adoption. We hope a more balanced blend of events might achieve that. The structure we're coming at, and again, it's the next phase of our experiment. You might see me in a year looking very, very ragged and saying that did not work at all. I'm quite okay with that. Bigger Plate Unplugged is moving now to an annual cycle. We cannot keep up the pace that we set. There's just no two ways about it. I will drop dead. 2016 in New York. So if anybody fancies a trip to New York, get it in your calendar, March 2016. 2017 in Brussels, two hours on the train from London. Thoroughly recommend it. Excellent muscles. The second thing is brunch club. I love breakfast, but breakfast club is too early. So we're going with brunch club. Brunch clubs are going to be small, as in five to ten people. They're going to be invitation-based. That's not to say you can't get in if you don't know someone. It's we will invite people who we know are active in the community, sharing in the community, who are actively engaged with Bigger Play, and then we will open it up if there's space left. These are going to be roundtable events that are really going to help us try and understand local communities, engage more regularly. They're less huge to try and organize. As long as you get the croissants, everyone's happy. They're going to be regional. It's very easy for us to turn up and do a morning workshop or uh, meeting with 10 people. Very, very easy. And that means we can do them more regularly. We are aiming to have the first one most probably in Amsterdam in May in 2015. And our hope will be the Dutch community will come along. We'll then follow that up with something in Paris, in Brussels, in London, in Newcastle, in Manchester, all of these places. So we're hoping this will expand our reach beyond getting everyone down to London for the day, which we know is not always that easy and not that cheap and not always that convenient. Who has joined thus far on one of our Google Hangouts? Great. First of all, thank you all for doing that. Um, who has no idea what a Google Hangout is? If you'd asked me that question about six months ago, my hand would have gone up. This is a baffling but brilliant technology. If anybody uses Google+, I'm sure you'll know what I mean when I say it doesn't work as it should. It's very confusing. Uh, if you're anything like me, you've got about seven different Google+, Plus accounts that just seem to pop up uh, completely inexplicably. Um, Google Hangouts, however, are a great technology to have video calls for free that people can tune into, and you can have actually more than one person on the call. You don't have to pay expensive things like GoToMeeting or WebEx. We have tried to use this, and we have done a monthly town hall hangout, which is me basically talking, not that interesting. We've also done some other ones where we've had other people on the call, and we've had Q&A sessions. That has been much more interesting, and I think more engaging for anybody looking upon it. So we're going to be doing many, many more of these, because again, in terms of reach, that will enable us to reach far more people in far more locations than we ever could, even by turning up for regional events. We're going to aim for more of the interactive style, so it's not just me jabbering on about whatever we've done this month. We're going to try and get more and more subject-focused hangouts. We did one last week which was focused on education. We had a teacher from uh, Lille and a teacher from, or a, an education specialist from Brussels. So again, we can plug people from all over the world and have a really good conversation and discussion about mapping without necessarily having to go there um, ourselves. So we think this is a really important piece of the portfolio, if you like. So conclusions, I think I saw the one, so I'm doing pretty well here. Conclusions are, offline is key, and I hope, really hope, by the end of the day you'll agree that coming here and meeting some people who share this interest in mapping was worthwhile. We think it needs to be more regular and more regional. We think the foundations, however, are really now firmly established to achieve that. The community, I think, is actually stronger and better connected than it ever has been before. Lots of people in this room have met in person at Bigger Plate Unplugged events who have never met before, who actually just lived 10 or 20 miles away. It's quite extraordinary. Sometimes we just need a little bit of a push. Bigger Plate Unplugged has, I think and I hope, established itself as the conference for anyone who's got an interest in mind mapping. It probably helps establish that when there are no others. We don't have much competition, but it's perfectly possible we might. So we've really got to make sure we sort of stamp our foot down and say, no, it's, it's B-pun or bust, really. 
exciting road ahead, more people, more momentum, and my touchy-feely soft bit is couldn't do without you in the room. So thank you all for coming along. Thank you in advance for your energy that you will share through the day. Thank you for engaging with my little uh, experiment early on. I hope that was uh, a good way of breaking the ice. Um, enjoy your day. I have a session at the end, which is where we can ask any questions about Bigger Play. If there are any, if there aren't, we just move on. Um, so I'm not going to do any questions now. I'm going to move straight on to introducing our first speaker, who I need to remind myself what order I said. It's Sharon. So. I'm going to introduce you to our first speaker, who's Sharon Curry, who is, uh, actually came to the very first Bigger Plate Unplugged event in London. Sharon is really the easiest way I can describe it. She is a bit of a leadership guru, not in some um, fluffy way in that she's been there, done it, uh, and actually has written a book about it in, in, in all reality. So Sharon is an ex-military lady, um, so don't mess around. And Sharon's going to talk to us about mind mapping in a leadership context. So thank you, Sharon. <laughs> 